2020 meeting of the Board of Appeals. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, federal law, chapter 30A, section 18, in the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. Members of the public who wish to watch and listen to the meeting may do so in the following manner. WCTV 7 p.m. Comcast channel 22, Verizon channel 38. This meeting of the Wilmington Board of Appeals is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members or the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via te technological means. Members of the public would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may also do so via telephone by dialing 1646-558-8656 and entering meeting ID 847-1140-7403. Then press pound and press pound again at the next voice prompt. Members of the public attending this meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion of the hearing designated for the public comment by the following steps previously noted. Then press pound nine on their telephone keypad. I'm sorry, star nine on their telephone keypad. This will notify the meeting host that the caller wishes to speak. All callers using this feature will be placed in a queue in the order they entered the prompt. In the event that despite our best efforts, we are not able to provide for real-time access, we will post a record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as we are able. So we have one case tonight, case 1520, 100 Eames Street, LLC, care of attorney, Robert G. Peterson, map 38, parcel, 4 and 4C to acquire a special permit in accordance with 6.6.7.7 in the Groundwater Protect Protection District. And um, Attorney Peterson, I, uh, I think you're aware that we are only a four member board tonight. Is that correct? I, I am, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I am. All right. So um, I guess, uh, Mr. Peterson, if you'd like to explain um, what you're asking for and uh, give us a little history about the project. Sure. Mr. Chairman, Attorney Robert G. Peterson, 314 Main Street, uh, Wilmington, uh, for the applicant, uh, 100 Eames Street, LLC. Uh, with me this evening is Jamie Garrity of Garrity Stone, who is the applicant, and Pat McCarty uh, from the McCarty Companies, who's been our engineer for this project. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, uh, we have been at this uh, site plan with the planning board. Uh, and the Conservation Commission uh, for the better part of, I think, between nine and 12 months. We had a little bit of a slowdown when the pandemic hit. Uh, as the board is aware, uh, a special permit under section 6.6.7.7 of the zoning bylaws of the town of Wilmington uh, is required from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Anytime more than 15% or 2,500 square feet of the premises uh, is rendered impervious. Uh, in this case, that is the case. Uh, although I would point out to the board uh, that the existing site uh, pre-development has 193,351 square feet of impervious area within the groundwater protection mm -hmm. district uh, with no treatment, uh, which is equal to 27.3% of the lot area. Uh, this project will actually result in a reduction of 3,554 uh, square feet of impervious area within the groundwater protection district, all of which will be treated, uh, which was equal to a 0.4% reduction. The post reduction impervious area of the site uh, is 189,997 square feet or 26.9%. Mr. Chairman, I am going to let uh, Mr. McCarty give the board an overview of the project with the chairman's permission, uh, but I would say that uh, this project, not only does it comply with all of the stormwater management standards that were in effect when we applied, uh, when we were three quarters of the way through this site, uh, plan review, the planning board adopted new, uh, more stringent uh, stormwater management regulations. And we were requested by Paul Looney, the town engineer, uh, to redesign our plan to meet not only the regulations that applied when we applied, but the regulations that were adopted after we applied. Uh, and we 
we did that voluntarily. So if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask Pat McCarty uh, to just give a brief overview of the project and um, the groundwater treatment that we are providing uh, as required by the planning board rules and regulations. Okay. Pat? Great. Uh, thank you very much, Bob. Uh, as stated, my name is Patrick McCarty. I am uh, president of the McCarty Companies in Lemonster. We're the design build contractor for the project. And uh, we've been working with the town for several months on the proposed site plans for the development. So if I may, I'm going to share my screen so I can pull those up. Everybody should be able to see the cover sheet now? Yes. yes. Great. Uh, so the project site is 100 Aim Street. It's the Alcote facility. We had Dana Perkins go out and do a complete existing condition survey. So that's the first sheet in the plan set. There's multiple buildings on the site. Aim Street is here along the right hand side. The MBTA tracks along the bottom of the page. And then um, all the existing buildings on the site. This is the main office building, the U shaped building that you see at the entrance. And then all the other buildings of the facility. The next sheet is the demolition, erosion control and demolition plan. So the plan calls for the demolition of the U-shaped building at the front and the green colored pre-engineered building that's all the way at the back at the right. Um, I should point out that my plans are rotated 90 degrees to the survey. So AIM Street's now along the bottom and the MBTA tracks are over here on the left-hand side of the page. So the Office, the office laboratory building will be demolished and the green industrial building uh, will be demolished. The remaining buildings on the site uh, will remain as Alco is going to continue operations at the site. The building here kind of central houses boilers so that can't be removed. This is laboratory and warehouse space and then these are production and warehouse buildings on the left hand side to remain. The proposal is to construct a new 44,000 square foot building for Garrity Stone that's currently located in Newburn. Um, proposing to relocate the main driveway to be more central to the site. Am, is, am I hearing that background noise or? I'm hearing it too. Yeah, I'm hearing, I'm hearing it, it well. too. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we're proposing to relocate the driveway here to be more central. Come down, we'll have two drive-in bays where the stone slabs will be delivered. A customer and staff parking area. This is the existing boiler building to remain. We'll have a second driveway that loops around the other buildings to remain that will be employee parking area. And then back to the loading area. Sorry, <laughs> background. <laughs> so the the flow through the building is linear. So raw granite slabs would come in uh, on trucks here. They would be stored on racks and then eventually brought through into the fabrication area. Well, they they would be cut and polished, and then at the end of the building, they'd be staged for a delivery going out to the different project. We have several um, van height bays here at the back the loading of those granite slabs onto the trucks for delivery. And then an, another driveway that wraps around here. Okay, sorry. I got muted for a minute. Am I back? I can hear you, Pat. Okay, thank you. I can hear you. Yeah, too. Um, so I was just trying to figure out where the feedback was coming. It was coming off of your phone. So I was just trying to get the feedback out of there, but you should be all set now. Okay, thank you. So the uh, limit of the groundwater protection district is this bold line right here. So if I go back to the uh, existing conditions demolition plan, this again is the groundwater, the limit of the groundwater district. So everything above line is in the groundwater protection district. So you can see that there's building, there's concrete, there's asphalt pavement, the existing driveway, the existing parking area. So there's quite a bit uh, of impervious 
here and then everything uh, through here, the buildings, all this, all this pavement and driveway all the way around. So as attorney Peterson said, about 193,351 square feet of impervious existing. The proposed plan results in a reduction of 3,354 square feet, which is a 0.4% reduction. Going through the set, this is the stormwater management and grading plan. So we have uh, three different stormwater management uh, areas for the loading area at the front. We have a trench drain to a manhole to an underground storm tech system. The remainder sheet flows down the existing driveway. We have a stone filter strip here that goes into a plunge pool and that plunge pool overflows into a constructed stormwater wetland. So the water stormwater will meander through here before it eventually discharges to the wetland area. And the third stormwater feature is an inf at grade infiltration basin. The proposed building has a single slope roof. So it slopes from the high side here to the low side. It's picked up with gutters and downspouts and then it's piped underground down to the infrastructure basin. So as Bob stated, uh, we comply with the stormwater management guidelines, and we also comply with the town's um, new stormwater management that was recently enacted. This, the remaining sheets are utility sheets, the water, sewer, gas connections, a landscaping plan, which you can see is very extensive, uh, trees along Ames Street and down the driveway, trees and landscaping along the edge of our pavement, substantial landscaping here at the main entrance to what would be the showroom, and then the constructed stormwater wetland uh, gets quite a bit of plantings in its own, uh, just as part of the functionality of that. Photometric plant, I don't know why it's jumping so fast. Photometric plan, and then detail sheets. Um, one of the detail sheets, there's a blow up of the grading of the constructed stormwater wetland. Um, this is a erosion control and stormwater management um, during construction, truck turning plans, and then just some plans of the building. Uh, conceptual development plan. One of the questions that came up in planning board is we admittedly it's a, this parking design is a little bit funky due to the existing building that has to remain. Uh, as I mentioned before that houses the central boiler. So with all coat maintaining operations that building can't come down. So this plan was just to demonstrate to the planning board that once that building can come down, the layout looks a lot more conventional. And then the final sheet is the storm tech detail sheet. Uh, uh, Paula Looney has been very helpful. He's reviewed these plans on a couple occasions and we've worked out all the details with him. And we're pleased to report that both Planning Board and Conservation Commission have already approved the project. And so the special permit that we're requesting would be the final step uh, in permitting. And then we could move forward towards a demolition and building construction. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. And I'll jump back to the layout. So let me just um, jump in for a minute. We do have a, um, as you referenced, we do have a letter from Paul Looney, the town engineer. Um, basically, uh, it's just really short. It basically says the proposed plans reduce the impervious coverage within the groundwater protection district in the post development condition. The engineering division has reviewed the documents referenced above and finds that the proposed recharge system demonstrate compliance with the special provisions of the groundwater protection district, specifically zoning bylaw 6.6.7.7. Further, the stormwater management, management system as proposed will provide a significant improvement to the water quality and groundwater recharge on site over the existing conditions. As such, we recommend granting a special permit as requested. So I, that came from our engineering division um, as referenced by Mr. McCarty. Do any of um, 
the other members have any questions or comments? Okay, Mr. Chair, can I ask a question? Sure. Mr. Chair, um, so I just wanted to know a little bit more about the boiler. I know it doesn't really have any effect, but so it's there, The bo that, that boiler room is for what the other buildings on the side where the the train tracks are or can you yeah, yeah. so there's a there's a natural gas fired boiler in this building that feeds the other buildings on the site that are to remain um okay so then the second question you said that it was going to eventually be eliminated when is that going to happen that would be phase two of the project so all code has an eight-year lease when they sold the property to Mr. Garrity, they also signed an eight year lease to, to remain on site. Um, so it would be at least eight years from now. Okay, I'm just wondering, thanks. Anyone else? Mr. Peterson, is there anything else that um, you had to present? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, I would like to, however, if, if you would indulge me to take a minute to thank Paul for uh, his hard work on this project. As I indicated in my opening comments, uh, we've been at this for over nine months. Uh, anyone that's ever worked with Paul uh, would describe him as thorough. Uh, and we did submit earlier plans that uh, Paul wasn't fond of. Uh, and he asked us to revise them. And, and quite frankly, he was of great assistance to us. Uh, and helping us revise our plans and helping us to re-revise our plans uh, once the new stormwater management regulations were adopted while we we're in the process of being permitted. So I think as a group, uh, we're thankful not only to the planning board, but to Paul as well. Uh, he's an extreme help and an extremely um, helpful asset to the town. And I just wanted to point that out. Um, are there any, um, do we know, are there any uh, members of the public waiting to comment on the project? <laughs> there's um, there's well, nobody in the waiting in there. room. <laughs> no, nobody in the waiting room? No, there's nobody in the waiting room as of right now, no. All right, so we'll just uh, wait a few minutes to see if there are any other uh, uh, members who are uh, residents who call in, but we'll just wait another minute. Am I the only one humming the Jeopardy theme music right now? Yeah. <laughs> you might right, think that because it's not me. I think we've waited. Um, no, no members have chimed, chimed in for, uh, I'm sorry, no residents have called in. So I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, I just have one question or one comment. And um, I did watch the planning board meeting on online. And um, I just had a question about the, about the entrance and it's, adjacency to the the buildings directly to the left of it um it looks like it's 24 feet um and that's there, there were no issues with being being that close to that to that building no the uh the whole discussion of the the driveway was there was a speed study from an old project on the other side of the railroad tracks that showed the 85th percentile speed of about 45 miles an hour. And if the vehicles were traveling that speed when they came over the tracks and then down the hill, the, uh, the sight distances wouldn't have been great. Um, so we had our own speed study conducted and the, sp the speed on this side of the tracks is actually much lower. And so we exceed both the intersection and stopping sight distances. So originally the, the planning board's traffic consultant was suggesting moving the driveway. It was actually only about a 14 foot move that they were looking for. But after we had our speed study conducted, they were okay with the location. No, I, I think it works well. I think it's a great improvement on the site. Um, be, be nice to see the rest of the site get developed in the same manner. Um, so I don't, I don't have anything else. Thank you. Anything else from any of the other members? All right. Um, 
With that said, would anybody like to make a motion? Make a motion. I'll make a motion um, um, regarding case 15 20, map 38, parcel 4 and 4C um, to approve um, on 100 Ames Street a special permit. Um, statute 6.6.7.7 for groundwater protection district. Okay. Um, as presented. So this will do this as Dan has done by roll call. Um, you have a you have second it. Uh, yeah, direct second. Does anybody talk? Uh, th thank you, Tom. Tom seconded. Um, so we'll take a vote. Uh, Tom? Yes. Jackie? Yes. I think we have to unmute Ray. Ray looks like he's uh, muted on my screen. I've, uh, I've tried to unmute him like three or four times. I think he needs to, um, I think he needs to to accept it. Now I don't see him at all on my screen. I wonder if you can just write in the chat box. <laughs> Fido oh, is uh, Ray's, quite Ray's, thirsty. <laughs> Ray's back. Where's that? Might be frozen. It's, it's not letting me unmute him. I'm just sending him a little note. I don't know if he, he even knows how to get it, but. His screen appears to be frozen. I don't know if um, if he got locked out of his internet or might be a connection issue. Hmm. Well, I am a yes and I don't know. Brady just signed in to be, to be a tech that he approves. He approves. Yeah. Okay. So we have a unanimous vote in favor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all very much. All right. Um, that was our only case tonight. Uh, Jackie, I know you sent out some meeting minutes, but I think we should probably wait till next month when Dan's here to vote on them. Everybody calls me Jackie, it's but I got, yeah, no problem. Sorry, Kelly. Dan does it all the time. That's okay. Jackie's always like, I didn't send minutes. I don't know. All right. Um, <laughs> That's fine. Tony, I did have one thing to run by you. Um, I, you probably don't remember because we do this a million times, but I did get an email um, and a call from one of the applicants, we approved um, a groundwater protection special permit to, um, it was case 1519 for 8 Freeport Drive. Oh, this was the uh, extension. Last year, obviously. Yeah, he was just looking to get a few months extension because of COVID, everything kind of got stopped. His workers didn't want to work closely, close together. So he started it, he's bought all the materials. So, you know, I told him, I could see if we would do it as a matter of course. Jonathan Silverstein agreed that we could do that because of the current situation. Um, but I didn't know if you wanted to do it that way or if you want to do it as a motion or. I think you just do it administratively. I, I think it's quite, quite simple. I mean, it's very reasonable. I agree. Okay. So is everybody okay if I give him an extra three months from the deadline, which is next month. I'm okay with that. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yep. Um, no problem. You're okay there. with it? Okay. Yes. Yes, um, me. Oh, perfect. You can hear me. Welcome back, Ray. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Ray. I lost my good power on, goes down to 1%, up to 3%. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> um, I think, Jackie, there's nothing else, is there? I mean, I did it again. <laughs> Tell you, there's nothing else, right? That's quite all right. All right. Nothing uh, else. Do I have a motion to adjourn? 
<laughs> I make motion the motion. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Um, okay, I'll take a roll. Ray. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Tom. Yes. And myself, yes. All right. Very good. Um, so we're on schedule just for the next month, regular scheduled meeting, correct? Correct. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of the date right now. The second Wednesday. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye, Jack. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 B